Right, so on the last video I did say I was going to do an in-depth review of this pinball system and hopefully this is in-depth enough. Uh, so let's dive in. As you can see I've removed the um, playfield screen. It's a 24 inch PC monitor which is a lot better than sticking a 24 inch TV screen in there because of latency problems. So uh, as you can see the PC system in there, obviously it's, it's, it looks like a HP system. And the CPU is an i3-3220 at 3.3 GHz, plenty good for this. And that CPU is a dual core and has four threads. Um, it does come with 4 gig RAM module. I will show you the module, what it comes installed. Um, you can see it down there. This module here has 4 gigs. Plenty good for, enough for the system to run the systems you, you want to put on it or on it. But I have, I have stuck some extra RAM in there while I've floating around. I've stuck some overkill RAM in there. Some Corsair Vengeance 2400, obviously megahertz RAM. 8 gigs of that, obviously it's not going to run at that speed. But this is only a temporary thing just to see how it helps the system along. And it is obviously more RAM with Windows and systems is better. Um, what's next? What should we look at next? Right. The SSD in it is a 250 gig. SSD, which you really want a good fast drive to, obviously you don't want to be hanging around waiting for stuff to load all the time. Even though um, the front end it uses is Pinball X and these days a lot of people have switched over to um, Pinup Popper, which seems to load tables a lot quicker, probably half, um, Pinball X is about as half as fast loading tables as Pinup Popper, but it's their own, it, it does the job, it does what it needs to do. And um, what Alright, let's get to the GPU. The GPU that it came installed with, I don't know if all systems ship with the same graphics card, but I'm sure they're all the same sort of spec. So the GPU is a AMD Radeon HD6670, and that has 1 gig of RAM on it. It does a, it does the job for the systems that that are on it. And But if you wanted, obviously, to push it to install, like, Pinball FX3 and max settings, obviously this will not cut it. You probably have to whack all the settings right to minimum and you may still get a bit of jittering, stuttering and stuff like that because it's, it's a fairly modern game and this is a fairly old card. So probably for that um, Pinball FX3, if you want to push that to the max, probably want a GTX 1060 something like that but obviously this system won't be able to power that because obviously it's got the standard bog standard HP HP rather power supply in there and obviously has limited connectivity and pretty much it's not the best power supply in the world to be honest far from it but that's what comes in the HP systems so obviously if you want to upgrade the system on the GPU side Obviously, you'll need a card that actually doesn't need a six pin or anything from the power supply. So, um, I will be upgrading the graphics card on this because obviously um, I do want a bit more power because obviously one gig of RAM, it's, it's, it's not a lot these days. So, obviously, it's an upgrade. I don't want to spend too much on the system, on the, another graphics card. So, probably go for something like a, a GTX 750 Ti, something like that. I think that, I believe, comes with two gig bytes of RAM on it so that helped the system a little bit more so you can up the settings on certain tables or systems if you want to so right obviously there's some other cards that you could upgrade it with I'll have a, have a browse through it to see which ones you can look at so obviously like it like I was just saying you got the um, GTX 750 Ti and it has two gigs of GDDR5 on it which will help and obviously if you get a used one they're pretty good price is probably around 40 40 to 60 pounds or I should think if you pay for a decent used one of these and obviously you can go for a GT 1030 a GTX 1050 is a nice little card obviously you can get there's ones that are full cards two fans or the smaller ones which is a single fan which is probably better for this system. See, so you've got the mini here. Whatever one. 
Legends, there we go, there you go, the, another one, Tech 52 on. Obviously that's bigger, it's got dual fans on it. But any card, obviously, uh, that's better than the one that's already installed on it, that doesn't need an extra 6-pin power connection. Just drawing um, power from the PCIe. The RX 550, that's a pretty good card. The RX 560, another good card, small. And that comes with 4 gigabytes. So, yeah, that's a nice little card there, an RX 560. Just depends on your budget, of course. So that's a look at graphics cards you can probably use if you'd like to upgrade one of these systems just to help newer gate, um, pinball systems power on like Pinball FX3 and up the graphics on it a bit more just to take away a bit of stuttering. Um, let's have a look at the back. Obviously you see this. This obviously was in here as part of the original system. I'm obviously I've taken it out because it's not needed. I mean the cables and that off there's a clip at the bottom I've clipped them into that so obviously this is just waste so I've removed that that can stay there and obviously you can see it's got the illuminated lights which obviously make it look a bit nicer not everybody likes the lights like that but it's pretty good when you're playing pinball in the dark and you've got the glowing a bit harder to record obviously but it does look good when you're playing it as you see, it's a nice, clean, refurbished system. It's nice and tidy. They've taken the care not to just... Obviously, some systems you can buy, like it's full of dust, and obviously if it's been from a house where somebody's been smoking, it could be a right mess, but this seems to be pretty clean and tidied up. Nice job there. Everything's secured in nicely. Obviously, be careful lifting it off if you tip the system upside down, because these power supplies can obviously just tip out and clip out. So be aware of that if you buy one of these and manoeuvring it around. Hard drive, it sits at the back, that's free moving, so I probably will want to just fix that down there to the back of the unit. Um, what else, have a look at the back. I mean, I've in, got a US keyboard here, so obviously for adding tables, but obviously if you buy one of these systems and you're not you're not up to how to install things to future pinball, pinball X and stuff like that, I won't mess around with it otherwise you'll end up with a system that's not going to be playing anything but if you've tinkered around with Pinball, uh, pinball X, Visual Pinball X, um, Future Pinball and stuff like that you know the file structure, you know where certain things go, the, um, the play tables, your back glasses, your videos, your music and ROMs and, and stuff like that but if you're not confident with stuff like that obviously don't mess around with it, otherwise you'll just end up with a case with nothing except a Windows operating system on it. And obviously, to get into the back without taking the playfield out, there's easy access here to the USB ports. And I have got a an air mouse, which I'll show you, which I generally use most of the time for settings, because obviously no cable, that's uh, infrared, so I had a little dongle plugged in the back little keyboard on the back and there and it obviously works as a mouse waving it around in the air hence the name air mouse so that plugs all in there so the access it would be better if obviously for access to stuff if people want to upgrade for moving if you could like the back box is fitted to the main the main chassis of the system which it would be nice if a lot of systems you'll have a hole in the back box where the cables go through and then you'll have two bolts, wing nuts this side, so you can easily remove them, take it apart, so obviously you're not stressing it when you're moving it around, because obviously there's no legs on this, you could fit legs to it, I mean, the original legs are quite expensive, you'd probably pay 100 quid for a decent set of original pinball table legs. So obviously you are going to be lifted around, so be very careful of it. If you put in weight or stress on the back box, because obviously it's 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 sealed there so you're not going to be able to get at it and obviously you can't take the back off to sort anything out so you probably have to break it up 
which wouldn't be a good thing. So minor gripe and my thing is access because not everybody's confident about fiddling around with stuff, buy something, say this prop unit is priced at £600. I mean, to build a system like this, it can take a lot of time. I mean, adding your tables and stuff like that takes a, takes a lot of time. And obviously, if you're adding tables yourself, you're obviously going to have to know the software, know where all the files go and the file structure, and obviously not installing something and breaking something else, and then obviously not being out sort of because you... Obviously, not knowing how the um, v pinball um, and all the systems work on it, like so, it is it is good to have a bit of knowledge about all um, the emulators. I'd say running them because you have like an emulating emulator, like uh, V pinball. You'll have V pin main and stuff like that. Some files are going there and stuff, and obviously put packs and that they go in a different file and on and on. Obviously, if you look into this, you'll see. It's not as straightforward as just putting some on, click and play. But obviously the system does come all set up. It, it does auto boot in the BIOS is set to, um, as soon as it detects any power it will boot. And obviously the shutdown button is on the side. You get to the, press the button, it will come, come up with an option on the screen and it will just say um, shutdown system. You move, hit the right bumper or left bumper depending on where it's positioned. Hit the button at the front and then the system is shut down. You'll obviously just have to wait to make sure the system shut down. I generally, as soon as the monitor says no signal, unplug the system and you probably have to wait about, say, 20, 30 seconds after unplugging it for the completely drain of power to, if you was to plug it back in, if you'd done it quickly and plugged it back in, the system wouldn't boot up. But if you let it, say, 20, 30 seconds, usually about 20 seconds, I'd say, let the power drain out and then obviously put the plug back in and the system will auto boot up again and off you go straight into the main whatever system you want to play. Uh, build quality, um, it's, it's, it's done fairly well obviously depending on what wood I mean some people use MDF um, different thicknesses and there's obviously you can get the plywood which is really good it's stronger it's good for moving around but it does cost a bit more and obviously the price includes a lot of time that he's put into it setting things up and that software wise um, bug fixing and stuff like this I know um, people will look around and they'll price things up and know they'll have their own opinions on what should be paid for certain parts of the system but generally it's as it comes it comes plug and play which is always a good thing for a lot of people but as, as me as soon as I get some, it's good to tear it apart. And the screen is a good screen. I've not noticed any input delays or anything that like that while playing it. It's it's nice and quick. I mean, a lot of people's like I've probably said before on pinballs, it's 4K. But Jesus, you'd need a completely new system in here to power that at decent, decent refresh rate, a decent settings. So obviously. Eh, 4K is 4K, whatever. 1080p, I think these tables look they look um, pretty good like that. I'm happy with them. They look nice and smooth. And um, it's pinball. Well, visual pinball, virtual pinball, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, it, it does what it's supposed to do. And it's a nice little tidy system. Everything, like I said, it's all fitted down nicely. Yeah, there's a little bit of movement there, but hey-ho. Um, the screen when it removes, I did have initially when I did get, I did have a problem getting the screen out because on the back of these screens there's like a USB port here. I've removed them now because they slightly sit out over here, and that was obviously when I was trying to lift the screen out, that was catching on the underside here. So eventually, when I did get it out, I did remove this. So obviously now it does come out a lot easier, but. That's just a little minor gripe. So I'll stop the video now and then I'll whack the screen back in and be back in a sec. Like I said, I'll put the screen back in and off we go again. Obviously I've taken off the front these aluminium strips here what hold the, the perspex, plexiglass, or whatever if you want to call it, in place to protect the screen because obviously you don't want anything banging on one of these screens because obviously it won't last very long. If you drop anything hard on it or heavy so yeah I've just removed that and um, 
Just so I could get to the internals, and I, that's quite straightforward. I mean, there's only there's four screws each side, two at the bottom, two at the top, and then obviously you take take these off and remove your plexi, and that gives you access to removing the screen and the internals because it this obviously the PC system inside is an old old system, so even modern systems can go wrong. So if you need to replace the RAM or something else you can get into it it's not that hard but obviously don't mess around with it if you're not com comf confident if i can get my words out um everything the sound on it you've got two speakers that are set on the side you've got one this side one that there plenty good enough for the sound loud enough obviously you can get better systems some people put like a little subwoofer inside it's just so you can feel some f force force when you've got your hand on the side the, the bass will boom, boom, obviously and you'll feel it so you, when you're using your flippers or bumpers you do get a bit, a bit of feedback instead of going putting knockers and in stuff like that which a lot of people do with a more expensive system but you can add to it how you want upgrade things but as a standard thing obviously another thing that's just minor gripe is no bezel on here it'd be nice if there was a finished bezel and another thing if the the back box was slightly high because when you're standing out you are slightly on a standard one you'd have your back box slightly up and you'd have a, a bit across here where you'd have your normal DMD and this bit would be slightly up so when you're looking forward playing it you'd be looking straight into the DMD instead of looking at an angle downwards but that's only a minor thing it's nice and tidy it's in there but that's just another thing it's personal preference taste I suppose but that's one thing I would have done it's slightly right, 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 made the back box a bit bigger, raised the screen up, had it fitted in that way, and then had the um, speaker cut out at the front with a bit of MDF or plywood or whatever materials you're using. But that, like I say, that's just a minor thing, personal taste, but as it comes, it does what it's, it says on the tin. And the back screen, obviously, it's 19 inch, with um, 5.4 aspect ratio. So plenty good enough, nice, uh, nice, nice screen for the back box. I mean, some people do like a real DMD, but you could go on and on and spend money and money and um, keep throwing it into it. But it does what it needs to do. You get your DMDs on there, all the systems it comes up around here. So obviously you've got active back glasses with the lights flashing, and you have static ones as well on certain ones. Um, Obviously on these, this one's a future pinball table and um, you can, if you know how to use BAM, which is better arcade mode in there, which you can change lighting settings, all sorts of things, the size of the play field, um, angle, you can tilt, tilt it forwards and backwards. Now the system's just gone back to here, Battle of the Planets. loading here we go so I'll take the long text to load obviously in BAM there is different settings in there of there is a tab so you can remove the the water marking off off the bottom right hand corner of the play field that will come on initially initially rather and I think it stays on for about 30 seconds and then it just fades away And there we are. So obviously I've tinkered around with this table, I installed this was the last table I installed, I'm going to install a load more. Um, obviously it's personal preference, a lot of people like to play around to get a bit of a 3D effect with it so it looks more realistic so you can see under under certain objects and to the toys as they call them on the table just to give it more of an authentic look but obviously if you don't know how to do that as you, if you get one of these and you're not sure about using anything then obviously leave it how it is this table obviously isn't on it I've installed this myself and there are there are thousands of tables to go out it's all what you like obviously the more tables there are a lot of people just generally play the same say 10 10 tables and rotate and just flip through the rest like 
like any, like anything else. So the only, it's generally a lot of people will only play on a certain amount of tables. And it is nice to stick at a table you like and start playing it instead of a couple of minutes of one, a couple of minutes of another and stuff like that. It is, a lot of people are always saying the pinball, well, visual, virtual pinball, that add one table, get that working right, enjoy that table, and then when you want to add another one, add another one instead of having a massive one installed and then uh, like a kid in the sweet shop not knowing what to do and not sticking at it and then it can it will it can burn you out if you have got too much options at the start so the old, old advice to like stick at a table you like and play it enjoy the table and then move on to another one or install another one you like get everything working nicely the back boxes the dmd and the play field obviously and get it how you like it but as a whole yes it is a nice it is a nice system it's small there's not a lot of weight to it but I will be careful moving it and stuff like because obviously it comes with no legs so obviously a lot of people unless you've got a table or a unit that can sit at the right height going to be lifting it around moving it so that I will be careful doing that but as a whole it is a fun system um, I may be doing another video later when I get the new graphics card installed just to see how the extra power does perform on it and the very very last thing before I go, um, if you would like one of these, you I did get it off of eBay, and the seller is Things to Buy 2010. So I will put a link in the description so you can have a look at that. And thank you, and see you in the next.